tonight on a special edition of Evening. It's our favorite stories of the year. From close encounters with grizzly bears to one of the craziest car races in the Northwest. Why am I doing this? Because it's fun. Plus, we'll reveal which story you couldn't stop talking about this year. Hello and welcome to Evening. I'm Saint, joined by Kim, who is dressed very nicely for the holidays, and Jim. <laughs> okay. It is kind of wild that 2023 is quickly drawing to a close, so tonight we wanted to take a look back. And what a year it's been. We've traveled to incredible places, eaten at fantastic restaurants, and met some amazing people. Today, we're sharing some of our favorite moments and stories from the past year. Up first is Kim, who caught up with a Seahawks legend. Yes, I got to interview Doug Baldwin right before he opened his community center in Renton, and he gave us an exclusive tour of the building and a look inside his own heart. Yeah, my grandfather was the most influential person in my life when he was alive, I mean, he still is. This is Doug Baldwin. And I really miss him. I miss that smile. <laughs> Realizing a dream the gymnasium dedicated to his grandparents in the community center he worked for a decade to build. How have you changed? Oh, um, lots of ways. Uh, I don't know if I could give you a specific answer, but what I will say is that um, what I've learned is the affirmation of what team sports taught me when I was younger, is that uh, in order to be successful, in order to win as a team, everybody has to have their role. And so I'm realizing that I am part of a, a broader team and I have a role in impacting our community for the better. The Family First Community Center in Renton is one point of impact, a public-private partnership inspired by Doug's childhood. This is the gym. This is the gym. And you know, the ironic thing is that the community center back in Florida, that's what we had, it was mostly a basketball gym. The kind of space where core memories are made, but what if, he thought, this center could be even more? So that is our dance studio. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, staying active. I was never a dancer, not, <laughs> not by any means. Uh, but, you know, I recognize um, the experience that that provides. You're telling me you're not gonna try any pirouettes well, in here? Oh, no, I'm definitely gonna try. <laughs> I'm just, we're not getting that on camera, is what I'm saying. I tried. <laughs> There's also a fitness room, activities lounge, and maker's space for students. And in what may be the first model of its kind in the nation, an on-site clinic. You could be just enjoying the fruits of your labors, kicking back, doing things that don't really impact anyone else. Why not do that? I am enjoying the fruits of my labor. The core question is why am I here, right? And I. I'm starting to wrestle with this more and more. It's like, why am I on this planet? Why did, why, you know, why am I here? And I don't want to just take up space. There's kids that have been coming in here and playing basketball already, and when they get older and they have kids, you know, what impact is it going to ha have on their kids? I've got three daughters that I'm raising. The things that I'm doing now are going to benefit them. I may not be here to see that impact, but I know if I'm doing my work now, when they're older, when they have children, their children will be better off because of the work that we're doing today. I have never been a bigger fan of Doug Baldwin than I am now. He is such an amazing human. Great athlete too. Yeah, you bet. Our next story is Eric Riddle. He's a producer on our staff. You guys know him, you might not. Uh, this is his favorite story of the year. It's about a UW photographer who captures all the best moments. When it comes to University of Washington sports for the past 14 years, Scott Eklund has been the guy behind the lens for the university's athletic club. He's responsible for taking team photos of all 22 of the school's varsity sports, as well as covering all of the big games. We followed along as Scott captured the action at this year's football game between UW and Oregon. You don't want to miss anything, and you want to tell the whole story, what the stadium was like, what the atmosphere was like tight shots of fans enjoying the game and really going you know, crazy. And also not miss any big plays. And hopefully, if you're in position and there is a big play that happens, that you get it. Of all of the games that we could have shot his story at, 
UW versus Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. A, a lucky pick. He has yeah. a great job. And if you'd like to see more of Scott's work, we have the entirety of that story up at king5evening.com, along with all the other stories you're seeing in tonight's show. All right, it is time for me to pick my favorite story of the year. And for that story, I got in on the action at the Kitsap Destruction Derby, and it was a lot more than I bargained for. Oh, this is just the most redneck thing you can do. This is just family event coming out here and smashing cars. Dan Pies is driving like a man on a mission, high flying dirt hitting us in torrents. And somehow I've got the best seat, which is why I'm holding on for dear life as we slide sideways around the turns. Dan is the big boy in the club. Even though that car feels like it's sliding around, he is in full control of it. That's why Dan and his 74 Cadillac Coupe de Ville are the favorites this season. Dan has been driving for more than 30 years. Nobody can take a curve tighter. Best strategy is don't get hit, but uh, sometimes you gotta be a little bit more aggressive, and uh, sometimes you get, there's a lot of luck involved. Of course, luck comes in two flavors, good and bad. That was self-inflicted right there. Because it's fun. All strapped in, helmet fastened, I joined Dan for a solo heat race. We're just going twice around in an oval, but look at how much work it takes to make all those left turns. The fastest time of the day. Okay, my heart is still racing right now. The car hasn't been racing for a full minute. My heart is still racing. And we're not done. The driver with the fastest time always starts at the back. If he passes everyone, it's called a hat trick. We're going to go ahead and wait for everybody else to get all bottled up in the front, and we're going to go around them. It's a plan that works to perfection. OK, that looked like fun. It looked like you had a good time. I actually did, you know, and I never felt like I wasn't safe because okay. those cars are like tanks. They were Detroit built giant cars, yeah. you know, before the oil embargo, at least. We are glad you are safe. It's lovely to still have you with us. <laughs> OK, now let's go to our executive producers favorite story of the year. It's actually an unconventional convention that Jim covered. There are several hundred pounds of, of poly rotomolded molded to make this part. Looks solid. You know, Jim, that is a septic tank. Just saying. Yeah, I see why our producer, Megan, loved this idea. See, I went to SepticCon, the state's largest gathering of professionals from the on-site sewage industry. Now, she was skeptical at first when I suggested the story, but then we all found out that it was kind of a fun challenge to make the mundane interesting. And really, who doesn't love a good poop joke? I don't love them. Still to come, the tribe sharing their culture and grizzly bears on a one-of-a-kind adventure. Plus, travel north of the border to a sacred and surreal destination. And later, we'll reveal your favorite story of the year when evening's best of 2023 special returns. Welcome back to our best of 2023 special. We're taking a look back at some of our favorite stories from the past year. Now it's time for Jose's favorite story, which takes him on an adventure across the border that you won't find anywhere else. <laughs> I am in British Columbia, Canada to see grizzly bears in the wild. It's a really magical place. And this tour is unlike any other because it's owned and led by the Omalco, indigenous people who share the land with grizzly bears for generations. The adventure starts at sunrise at the marina in Campbell River. First off, you're gonna load one of our boats and then you're gonna take a beautiful two hour boat ride. The water, when you're heading up the inlet, it turns bluer and bluer the farther you go up. It's just like this beautiful turquoise blue. The mountains are as high, and the water is literally as deep as those mountains. It's the grandest fjord in BC. We just finished a boat ride that was about two hours, and now we're going to take a bus ride. <laughs> So what I said was, hello to you all. My name is Cheyenne. I come from Oat, which is Church House, and I'm a Homoko First Nation band member. You're also getting that indigenous component woven into what you're experiencing, learning about area names, perhaps listening to some stories along the way. Something that I need to know for this tour. I like a word. Hogus. Hogus. Grizzly bear. 
The haugus are here for the salmon. We see plenty of fish, but no bear. Waiting game now. Then it happens. A hungry grizzly bear comes down to the river for lunch. He's the first. Guys Cheyenne and James help us find many more. But of all the bears, this is the guy I will remember the most because he got so close to us. And this bear didn't care. He was busy fishing. I mean, it is crazy how close he got to those bears, but Jose said he felt perfectly safe okay. that the Hamalco tribe has been leading those wilderness adventures for 20 years. They know what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. All right, Jim, you're up. Uh, well, I would say my pick is also one that took me to British Columbia and to one of the most unusual lakes in the world. Deep in the heart of Canada's Okanagan country, nature's paintbrush has created a multicolored masterpiece. To local indigenous people, the stewards of this special place, it is called Clelix. My ancestors have been here since the beginning of time. Leon Lewis is a Silk Okanagan elder who often goes by his chosen traditional name, Chiwelna. We've used this lake for thousands and thousands of generations. Commonly referred to as Spotted Lake for obvious reasons, this is one of the most mineralized bodies of water on the planet. There are seven minerals here that are only found in seven different parts of the world. They're never found all together, but here they are. The lake fills with water during the rainy season, then evaporates over the long, hot summer, revealing its precious jewels. Colorful pools, rich with magnesium, silver, and other minerals. We couldn't count every spot ourselves, but the locals say they number 365. One to represent each day of the year. Each pool is said to harbor a unique medicinal property. And one of the circles will talk to you and tell you, I am the one that will, will help heal you. This place of healing was kept out of reach of its ancestral owners for more than a century as descendants of white settlers claimed it for themselves. We had to buy it back. In 2000, this sacred space was finally returned to the hands of healers and knowledge keepers like Chiwelna, people who visit with open hearts, hopeful prayers, and heaps of gratitude. We are a part of the land, and the land is a part of us. That was absolutely stunning. It's an amazing place, and Spotted Lake is located less than 10 miles north of the border, and you can get a bird's eye view of it from Highway 3. Very cool. You know, the new year brings new resolutions, but we found a spot where people make their dreams and their hopes clear year round. Yes, it is the Wishing Tree on Capitol Hill, another highlight of 2023. It's easy to pass this quiet street corner without realizing how much it has to say. Deepening connection and love with my husband. Here, thousands of dreams gently blow in the breeze. I wish finding compassion for our imperfections was simpler. The heartfelt leaves of a wishing tree. Oh, I feel this one. I wish I could improve my mental and physical health. Some are signed, some are anonymous. All were written by people just passing through. I want to be able to walk with my sister for many, many more years. Using pens, paper, and instructions set out by Jane Hamill. There are not a lot of places in the world today where we are encouraged to just um, access our hearts. It's a, a pause in our everyday lives. Neighbors added a table and seating, and before long, desires both big. I wish to overcome everything. And small. I wish I had a skateboard. <laughs> poured in. For some, it's like magic. We have to believe in the universe, and so just putting it out there sometimes and you know, letting the universe do its thing. Jane laminates each and every one. Whatever the language and however specific the wish, they all represent something universal, hope. 
I think that a lot of my like wishes for myself are reflected like here and it's nice to see what other people want in their lives. How many of these wishes come true? Jane will never know. But when the branches begin to sag, she harvests and stores them, making room for more dreams to bloom. And they always do. There's so much hope here. And I feel like when you're in the presence of that much hope, it has a ripple effect. It is a lot of work, but look at all that love. So that was photographer Diane Lewis Torrey's favorite story of the year. Why. She shot it, she edited it. As always, amazing work. Coming up, meet the elk that became the star attraction of this small town. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We are taking a look at some of our favorite stories from 2023. Yeah, and the next pick is from producer Anne and photographer Kevin. It's all about an elk that stole a hammock and the hearts of everyone in a small town in the Cascade foothills. In the logging town of Packwood, at the bottom of Mount Rainier, elk are everywhere might even see real ones if you pass through in the afternoon when the local herd beds down. But there's one elk here that's a legend. Right now he's the star attraction. Old Hammockhead. For him to be standing right in front of the road is really surprising. Hammockhead, right here. Hammockhead is a local elk that got in a little bit of trouble last September, as it's estimated where uh, he had a tussle with a hammock. He's our world famous elk, uh, Spike, that's in here in town. He had a battle with a hammock, and uh, I guess he won. Uh, hammock Head has been walking around town ever since with uh, his crown of victory, which is uh, hammock remnants. That crown doesn't look comfortable. When I first saw him, I just felt so badly for him. But the fish and wildlife people said they came right away, they took a look at him, they decided, well, he can still eat, and the other elk are getting along with him just fine. So we're just waiting for him to shed that hammock. Hammockhead should shed his antlers later this spring. Dennis Reeby made these wanted posters that are all over town, offering a reward for whoever finds them. The plan is to mount the antlers in the local historical museum hammock and all. All right, Hammockhead did eventually free himself of that hammock, but then a few months later, he got tangled up in a lawn chair. <laughs> oh my gosh, let's hope 2024 goes a little better for that guy. I yeah. feel like he's messing with us totally. <laughs> Welcome back and a big drum roll, please, because it is time to reveal your favorite story of the year. That's right. This is the most popular story from our website, and it turns out a lot of our viewers are Goonies for Life Saint. Yes. That's right. I won, right? You did the story. Well, yeah. For the second and year in a row. And you're presenting yourself a bottle of wine. I do, yes. This is a story about the guy that bought the Goonies house in Astoria, Oregon. If you ever get invited to visit the Astoria house made famous by the Goonies, don't expect the new owner to just let you in. Bayman Zachary has big plans. I want to build the front contraption that was in the movie. I feel like that's the biggest part of the house, and, and you just can't let people in unless they stand on the tree stump and do the truffle shuffle. Bayman is a Kansas City entrepreneur who owns businesses that sell collectible trading cards. He has a Bury the Hatchet franchise, too. But most of all, he's a Goonie for life. Bayman, you, you just signed the, the, uh, the papers. The Goonie house is yours. How does this moment feel? It's completely surreal. It was a childhood dream from the time I saw the Goonies when I was eight years old. I dreamed of someday owning the Goonies house and, and chasing a treasure and, and, and finding a one I really treasure. So this is unbelievable. It, it really is. He saw the Goonies in the summer of 85 with his best friend, Michael. They'd done well for themselves. So they made a pact the day the house went on the market. And I said, I'll buy the Goonies house if you buy the house next door. And so it's literally, we're gonna be neighbors again after 30 some odd years. How is this possible? It's like we live happily ever after as neighbors. It's the most surreal thing. 
It is so surreal. It's so great. All right, I've been invited, so I'm hoping to visit Bayman in 2024 and see the Goonies house up close. There you go, and share some of that wine with him. Sure, why not? <laughs> it really has been an amazing year, and we are so grateful to you for watching and supporting our show. Yeah, if you want to see any of those great stories that we shared with you tonight, you can go over to our website, king5evening.com, and we've got even more bigger and better <laughs> stories coming up in 2024. Thanks for riding along with us. See you next time. Right, that was got a lot a, of enthusiasm. Who's got one of these wine opener things? Is that what that is? What is it called? A wine yeah. opener? I'll help you with that. Wine opener.